So, first and foremost, no Kremlins. We've got a couple of Andres, pair of Stalingrads from Pugs and a Smolensk. We also have a Smolensk on the other side, a Moskva Zao on MSB. Interestingly, both sides fielding two destroyers, Zephy 2 and Shimikaze for Punks, and a Daring and Shimikaze for MSB. Hmm. Okay, interesting that we have, as I say, not seen any hover asks. However, Wee! Big explosion. All right, let's go see what MSB are up to. Okay, so we have a Kobayashi Yamato. I wonder, does that range find the help accuracy? Eee, bonk. The HIJMS compensating for something, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. So, Zao and Smolensk pushing south. Shimikaze under Wariat with the Des Moines backing him up for radar, pushing it to B. The Daring is ambling off for C. Of course, Daring doesn't get an engine boost, so it's not the fastest destroyer in the game by a long shot. Fairly loud one, though, and it does get British guns. So, up the Royal Navy, roll Britannia, etc., etc. And he's got some heavy backup as well in the shape of the Andre and the Moskva and of course the Montella. We haven't seen so much of the Monty in recent tournaments, but she's a very stable and capable performer, especially when somebody is running a Jolly Roger Mark III and a, I'm not sure if that's the King of the Sea or the King Pirate flag there. Somebody has definitely earned their bragging rights on that boat. All right, meanwhile, we have an early contact with Crystal Eye over on the other side, but no real information as to what the enemy are doing. Although the fact that he is heading west southwest from the center deployment suggests that we're going to see some action pointing around at A. So here's the question. Where's it going to be? So let's have a quick look. Wario Shot, done the usual, he's done a 180, got himself turned round, uses engine boost for the extra acceleration rather than the speed, and started a capture of point B, which has... was doing reasonably well until the smoke basically advertised exactly where he was. Another destroyer jammed the cap, and consequently he's been forced out. Although I think somebody's radar set might have had some... Yeah, right, yeah, that would explain it. Darth Punk got into range, popped his radar. That would explain the sudden and highly accurate barrage of fire that came soaring in and dented both boats. And Conrad there, hugging the island, had just enough to shield him from the angry cruisers. Unfortunately, it was not enough to shield him from the angry Yamato, and he is down to just over half health as a consequence. Manages to get behind a little bit of a rock and the radar's gone, so he's just inching forwards, trying to restart the cap. Darth Punk's had to back up slightly, taking damage in his turn. And we'll see how rapidly that turns into a stalemate there. Meanwhile, the Daring has sorted into point C. Car Zar Warrior gets some early shots out, gets his torpedoes running out towards Xerxes. And we'll see if it does that. Xerxes, of course, will be maneuvering. So those aren't so much about doing damage as they are about making sure that Xerxes can't just barrel into the cap and start reversing it back. Point B still mostly uh, stalemated. Anyone trying to push in? Oh, Montana suddenly reaches out and touches Darth Punk in what I can only assume was the no no spot. And they're going to feel that because that was one of their radar boats gone. I say, Monty, perhaps not flavor of the month at the moment, but those 12, 16 inch guns are still very reliable. They have got the American super heavy shells and well, it can make your life very, very awkward. However, more importantly, that gives Conrad a clear run because he no longer has Darth Punk spotting him to set up in point B and start the cap going. Lombards no longer has a spotter and can no longer drop shells straight into Conrad's bow as a consequence. 
until the Shimakaze dives into point B because the cap of B has stalled again. Something else is in that control point. And yet the mappings are going. They've realized the Shimakaze or the Z-52 has run north and is tucked in here. And oh, someone's providing spotting. We're still seeing semi-random shells come in. Those shells were a bit too tightly grouped to be completely random fire. However, again, point B has stalemated. Neither side can stay in there long enough without taking some very heavy fire. Point C, however, has turned red, which is a bit bad for MSB. And oh, there we go. Vojti takes an early hit there. He's backed up and dodged the second torp, but he's had to blow his dam con to avoid flooding. And there's a wild Schmolensk in point A. So you know what that means? Fire. All the fire. It's raining shells over there. Vojti is fighting in the shade. It's not just the Smolensk, of course. There is at least one Andre out on the flank as well that's looking for shots. Vosti's back on fire. The barrage is not ceasing. There is no respite and no mercy. So, oh, and the torpedoes are really just the cherry on top, aren't they? Well, farewell, Yamato. We hardly knew ye. Bonk. Henri gets the kill. However, Hooligan says, oh dear, speaking of torpedoes, farewell Yamato. We hardly knew ye either. Oh dear. So much for the big guns on both sides. So Hooligans tried to bolt out to grab B, gambled on the radar being on recharge. That gamble really hasn't paid off because he's got multiple rounds coming in from both sides. And at this point, he's got about another mile or so to go but the radar is down so if he can break contact wait no he can't break contact because the radar from the Moscow just started up this is gonna hurt oh sorry ouch so punks unfortunately getting caught in a mul getting several ships taken out in quick succession and that has basically hammered the center of their line pretty much out of existence. The Montana's moved up to push on Crystallize, so Shemoz is really just waiting for the reload at this point, or possibly just hoping that Crystallize is not going to duck behind that convenient island and thereby evades 12, 16 inch deliverers of freedom. However, there is only, there is no Kremlin, there is only Balancegrad. And Balancegrad is getting somewhat at the moment. In fact, I suspect Xerxes is, yeah, going to be in a bit of a problem because he's got Moscow rounds coming in and those can definitely punch through his side like so. The Daring is looking for blood and is doing a credible mini Minotaur impersonation there, switching back to high explosive as he arms. However, Echo X gets the shot. Xerxes, unfortunately, not nearly angled enough there. And if he had tried to angle, well, the Henri was moving up to burn him. And I think at this point we are administering the last rites. Punks had a fairly solid start, but once the shells started flying again, I think this is a question of tournament experience coming in. MSB have put in good showings in several Kings of the Sea tourneys before. And you're just seeing things like Bezar being willing to take blind shots straight over, drop the shells past this island, and try to get supporting fire in. Shot calling like that is what distinguishes a really good team from the Amir contenders. However, Kilus 31, under focus. I mean, he's got one, two, three, four, possibly five or six ships actively on him. He's putting shots out towards the Des Moines, and, well, the Des Moines bow on, so that is really not going to work. For all that Stalingrad might play like, well, it's a super cruiser and not a battleship. So the Daring pushes in, starts throwing high explosive. The Honoré is throwing exploding baguettes. The Des Moines is dealing burnination and freedom. And the Montana is just content to sit back and let everybody finish him off. And yes, that would be every single bit of the ship on fire, at least until the damage control came back offline, but it's really not going to change very much. 2,000 health, rapid fire coming in from the Daring, Henri takes its time, drops shells, 
However, I think it might be the Des Moines that does the deed. Yep, there we go. 8-inch heavy up. high explosive does it. Crystal Eye, unfortunately, not in a position to intervene. And now it's his turn in the firing line. So, yeah. Yowzers. That was a very one-sided stomping once MSB decided to get into gear. Having said, uh, punks have tried. I mean, they've managed to get round the flank, and perhaps too little too late, but... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is... Fairly spectacular. Torpedoes come angling through, but not enough to make a difference. And it's the Z-52 that gets picked up on the radar and rapidly hammered down by a combination of Daring and Des Moines again. And Crystalli also in the final line simultaneously. I think at this point it's basically fire as she bears. There goes the Montana from a couple of hits from Rojot. And the Z-52 actually does manage to break contact, but MSB are not relenting. They're just hammering the area of ocean where they know he's got to be. And with one final contact... Zar Warrior getting a little keen there for the over-terrain shots. But again, it's the Des Moines just firing on the last bearing. MSB take the win in what was an extremely one-sided bout.